in part A of this problem, we need to find the constant A. So in this problem, we're given that the initial wave function, so this is the wave function evaluated at time equal to zero, is equal to this expression over here. And the one thing we do know is that this initial wave function has to be normalized. So if we take the modulus and then square it, the wave function, so on the right hand side this will become this modulus of a squared and here we have 9 times xi squared plus 16 xi1 squared plus uh, 24 xi0 xi1 so that should be a conjugate sign but since these functions uh, have no imaginary components I can just write it like this and um, to emit the conjugate sign directly so th uh, this is the expression that we have and then we know that this is going to be normalized and we, we also know that all these individual uh, xi0 and xi1s are also normalized if you square them and so uh, one thing we can do to find this constant a is that we want to uh, integrate both sides so when we integrate both sides on the left hand side because this is normalized this is going to be equal to 1 and on the right hand side the constant just remains and then we will be integrating these functions over here so 9 integrating uh, xi0 squared, you just get 1 because this is normalized. Integrating xi1 squared, this is also equal to 1, so you just get 16. And then here you get 0 because these functions are orthogonal to each other. So you just get 24 times 0, so this is just 0, so we kind of just ignore that. So now we know that the uh, modulus of a squared is equal to 1 divided by 25. So now we know that we can choose a to be equal to one fifth. So we know that if a is equal to one fifth, then the square has to satisfy this relationship over here. And so we can choose a being equal to one fifth, and uh, this would give us a valid initial wave function. So in this case, that means our xi x zero is equal to one fifth three xi naught plus four xi one. So this is the answer to part a the constant is equal to one-fifth. Now for part B, we need to construct the wave function now with the time component included. So we call the formula for the wave function. It is equal to the linear combination of all the possible stationary states. So you have Cn times the nth stationary state, so this is the term with all the x's, and then we have the term with the t components which is equal to this expression over here. And in our case, we can find what these CNs are equal to by comparing the coefficients when time is equal to zero. So in the problem, we're given the initial wave function. And as we've just found, it's equal to 1 over 5, 3 xi0 plus 4 xi1. And then now we can compare this with the coefficients over here. So in t is equal to zero, we're given this. And then because of this expression over here, we can also substitute t being equal to 0. So in this case, this term just becomes 1, because uh, when you raise e to the power of 0, you just get 1. So on the right-hand side, you have linear combination of all the stationary states. And then if you compare the coefficients, you see that c0 has to be 3 over 5. So this 3 over 5 times xi0, it corresponds exactly to this. And by the same logic, c1 is equal to 4 over 5. So once again, uh, c1, you multiply this by xi1, and you match this with the term on the other side, so you get c1 is equal to 4 over 5. And all the subsequent terms, all the way to c infinity, they're all equal to 0. And this, under this conditions, uh, this initial wave function will be satisfied. So we know that our wave function here we found our Cn's. We know that C0 is equal to 3 over 5, C1 is equal to 4 over 5, and all the subsequent C's, they're all equal to 0. So we now we can write this out as 3 over 5 xi0, so e to the power of, so this is the uh, 0 stationary state, the energy level, plus 4 over 5 xi1 e to the power of negative i e1 t over h bar. And then we can do better by simplifying this a bit further by applying the formula for the nth uh, energy level. So we call that the nth energy level is equal to n plus 1 half 
times h bar omega. So we can substitute this into this expression to simplify it a bit more. So for e naught, you just substitute 0 to n, so it's just equal to 1 half h, h bar times omega. And so you see that this term over here becomes xi naught times e to the power of negative i omega t divided by h bar, divided by 2 actually. And for here, you get the same thing. You have 4 over 5 times xi1. And then now you substitute the first energy level. So you substitute n equal to 1, you got 3 over 2 h bar omega. And once you substitute it inside the expression, you get e to the power of 3, negative 3, i omega t divided by 2. So this is what the wave function looks like. This is the complete wave function with both your x and your t components. So now the second thing we need to find is the modulus square of the wave function. So this is going to be the term that we're actually going to integrate when we're looking for the probabilities. So we need to take the conjugate and then we multiply it by the original function. So when we take the conjugate, the, uh, the i term, this imaginary component, becomes positive. So because xi0 and xi1, they're both uh, real, there are no imaginary components for these two functions, we can just leave them be, and here we just need to take away the positive sign, because they are conjugates. And then we multiply this conjugate with itself, so we just multiply this by the original wave function. And then all we have to do is just to, just to multiply these terms together. So when we multiply these terms together, you get uh, so both of these terms we have a one fifth, so I'm just going to pull them out. So it becomes one over twenty five. So I'm just doing this to simplify some steps. Now here you see that both of these terms will multiply together. You get nine xi naught square, and then the e terms are going to cancel out. So you get e to the power of zero. So that's just equal to one. And the same thing happens for these two terms when they multiply together. You get sixteen. So the twenty five is outside already. Sixteen times xi one squared, and then the e terms they also cancel out. And then when these two multiply together, you get uh, 12, so 4 times 3, that's 12, the 25, once again, it's outside. You get xi0 times xi1, and then when the e terms collide together, you get e to the power of negative 2i omega t over 2. So I can do a bit better by taking away the 2, so it's just equal to i omega t. And the same thing happens when this multiplies with this term over here. So once again, we have 4 and 3, you get 12 xi0, xi1. And when the e terms multiply together, this time you get positive i omega t. And then we can combine this term by using Euler's formula. So uh, e to the power of negative i omega t, this is just equal to cosine negative omega t plus i sine negative omega t. So this is just applying Euler's formula. And for e i omega t, so without the negative sign, this is equal to cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. So when you add these two together, you can see that the cosine terms you just get, uh, so let me open a new page. So let's just do a brief summary of what we've found so far. So 1 over 25, and then we have these 9 xi0 squared, and then 16 xi1 squared, and then we left off with the 12 xi0, xi1, and then we have these two e terms uh, adding uh, to each other. And then you see that the cosine terms, they just pile up together to give you 2 cosine omega t. Because cosine negative omega t is just equal to cosine omega t. That's just how the cosine function works. It's symmetrical about, about the y-axis. And then for sine negative omega t, this is equal to negative sine omega t. Once again, this is just how the sine function works. And then you see that this is just going to cancel out with this term over here. So we don't need to worry about the sine term. So in the end, you're going to be left with something like this. So the sine term just goes away, and then you just have the cosine term. And so you see that this function over here, the modulus square of the wave function, is equal to 1 over 25 times 9 xi0 square plus 16 xi1 square plus 24 xi0 xi1 cosine omega t. 
So this is the answer for the modulus square of the wave function.